guys. Today I'm going to talk to you. Uh, I, I have some ideas from um, Clutterbug Cass uh, Arson from Clutterbug. You might have seen her on um, YouTube. Uh, she also has a TV show. Now I haven't had a chance to watch it. Uh, and I don't even know if it's still on, but these are some great tips. She's very popular in the organizing uh, YouTube uh, space for sure. And I will leave some information on um, her in the description box. But from my notes, she says, do a quick declutter. Do not pull everything out, just declutter. Because what she's wanting you to do and what she is trying to get us to understand is that we need to organize for our space that we have, not our stuff. And uh, Dana K. White will explain it this way, and I've said it before. Dana K. White says, your container is your container. If your closets and chest of drawers are overflowing, then declutter at least enough to where everything fits in your chest of drawers and your closet, except maybe some seasonal items that you may rotate out, but your container is your container. Uh, she says, and know your organizing style. Do you like hidden and detailed or do you like everything hidden but it doesn't necessarily have to be detailed into you know this is my little container inside the container for the pain reliever this is my container inside the container for uh, cough syrup and having everything or do you like hidden but all the medications in one container um, or are you just visual, you have to see it, but it's in bins to where you can, um, and we'll go into what she says on this a little more at the end of this, and we'll explain it a little more, but do you like visual with detail, the dividers, or, or do you just like everything out and you see everything and it's all accessible and uh, it's not categorized into little details. Uh, she, and then she talks about zoning. Where do you use it the most? Daily use items should be from the top of your head to your waist. This area here should be your um, daily use items. Uh, so it's in arm's reach. Uh, the least steps as possible. Rarely used extras are all up high at the highest level. And then her example would be all baking items together where you bake. Where do you naturally pile things? Make a pretty bin or system for where you naturally pile things. A good example is that I have the habit of taking my shoes off before I get into bed. So I have a bin under my bed where I put my everyday shoes, like my flip flops and my uh, sandals and stuff like that. Uh, the stuff I wear every day. Um, and then she says, contain then you can contain your stuff. Then you can figure out what kind of bins that you need. And she talks about valuable real estate. Again, she repeats that it's eye level to waste. That's your valuable real estate. Uh, put overstock items at the top and overstock items at the bottom. Um, and she describes her her um, cabinet, her it's kind of like a pantry in the restroom where she has her toilet paper at 
the bottom shelf because that was waist high and then the next shelf is towels and then at eye level are the meds and then way at the top is her back stock of meds uh, that's how she does hers the container and shelf is the limit declutter again as needed until everything fits on those shelves uh, organize for your space not your stuff and she talks about decluttering one closet for all four different types of individuals um, if you like to see all of your stuff she talks about maybe those clear wire bins because everything's visual and in plain sight and you can categorize that way and then uh, she talks about those that just likes it hidden but in big categories um, to use solid colored bins for it uh, or is for that type of person and then the person that wants everything hidden but also wants all the little detailed categories you can get the solid bins and then put smaller bins inside those bins so that everything is categorized now I like to do that I'm more of a um, I do like the solid bins and I do put the little bins inside but not because I'm trying I am trying to categorize but mostly I'm trying to make everything stand up I don't like it all to lay all jumbled in the bottom uh, and then you've got the person that still likes it visual but they like it uh, contained and those type of bins might be your clear bins. so you've got your wire bins where you can see everything or no bins at all and then you've got your hidden storage to where you can just kind of chunk the categories in and not have to worry about it looking pretty because it's all contained but it's all solid or you can be the type of person that likes doesn't like to see anything but wants to be able to have everything in little individual divided containers and then you've got the other person who is you like it contained but you still have to be able to see it so you use the clear containers uh, so those are just different ways uh, people like to organize so we're going to go ahead and review these ideas that she's talked about uh, she breaks down four steps to help you transform your home with a little organization of your space not your stuff don't organize based on a broad category instead organize based on what you touch and use the most often uh, Cass says this isn't about trading traditional where things should go it's about creating a home that functions the way that you do and she says valuable real estate in your home is anything from your eye level waist to eye level things things you use every single day need to be stored in that valuable real estate you want to put things where it will require the least amount of work to maintain such as putting dishes near the dishwasher look at where you are naturally piling things that's probably where you need to create a zone for those items for example bills on the counter might be where you need to set up a bill paying station or if you're naturally piling things on the countertop or the cat top of the cabinet maybe there's a drawer that can be cleaned out and used for that purpose and what was in that drawer can be relocated if possible because me I like my stuff to be hidden so I would probably opt for the drawer uh, now just for example I did move my when the pandemic started I moved my what was a junk drawer 
which is now a utility drawer. It's all the things that I look for when I need to fix something like batteries, hammer, uh, measuring tape, those things that I can never find. I made a utility drawer uh, opposite of where I used to have the junk drawer because what I was now going to use that drawer for were all the things for the pandemic. You know, I did have hooks for my keys and the mask that we used for that day would hang on those hooks with my keys, but we had a drawer so that all of the pandemic items, the hand sanitizers and the mask would all be in a drawer and out of sight. So I was able to what I used to have in the drawer across from it was um, cookie cutters and stuff like that. And that's only used when I bake. So I went ahead and made a bin for that that is stored somewhere uh, where I only use that around Christmas. So I relocated that. So that's what I mean by some of the things that you thought you needed to put in those drawers, you may be able to put somewhere else because they're not used as often and put the more often used things that you don't want to sit out on the counter in the drawers. Or get a pretty bin, like she says, for bill paying station if that's where it normally gets piled. Um, containers in your zones allows for additional categories or extra detail in your organization. The first step is to declutter. This means getting rid of trash, things that don't belong, things you haven't used in the last year, things you've just had enough of and want to go. Know your organizing style. How do you naturally sort and store your belongings? Zone your space. Put things where you use it the most often. Don't take everything out of your kitchen and try to organize in one session. Organize one drawer or one cabinet at a time. That's how I do it because the other system that a lot of organizers insist on are very overwhelming. They want you to take every single item out of the kitchen and, and put it all back in one day. I see a big overwhelming mess and therefore I don't organize that way. Um, don't take everything out of your kitchen and try to organize it in one session. When you have zoned a space knowing what it will be used for, it's time to organize it. The shelving you have will dictate the number of categories you can have. Four shelves will contain four categories. Or in the kitchen, you know, it, it's going to be a category of dishes, but you may have cups and plates at eye level and then up higher the other cups and plates that you don't use as often and then the stuff that you use once a year or so at the top. Um, let the space be the limit for your stuff. If everything doesn't fit into the space, it's time to make some tough decisions about what needs to go. So first, you may need to just do a quick declutter of all the obvious things that you know you're ready to let go of. But at the end, to make your organizing work for the space, you may have to do another declutter to get things to fit in the container that it needs to fit in in the space you know if it's oh if your bathroom is overflowing with stuff then it's probably time to let go of some things all right guys i hope this was interesting for you and uh i will leave links to cast from clutterbug in case you want to check out some more of her you youtube videos but i hope this was very interesting to you and I will see you on the next podcast.